nothing that Jesus ever said didn't produce because he was speaking from the heart of God. He was abounding in the Word. He was abiding in the Word. And that's why it's so important for us to know the Word and study it. We will take you systematically through the Word, the things that are important to you as a Christian, to know how to live life and what, how to study the Word in a way that it can be accurately applied in your life every single day. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We're going to have an exciting week ahead of us. It is time for us to study the Word of God. Now, as you know, every day we do study the Word, but today we're going to be talking about studying, studying the Word of God. You heard that right. We're going to study how it how to study the Word of God, what it means to study the Word of God, and how important studying the Word of God is. And to help me, I've got Pastor Danny Carmichael Green. He is the Dean of the Bible College here, Christian Family Church International Bible College. And we're going to take a look at the Word of God together. Pastor Danny, welcome. It's so great to be here. And it's such a wonderful topic to spend time around. Why and how to study the Bible. I know that you really enjoy studying the Word. And that's, you know, the life of a Christian. I think almost every Christian that we talk to wants to know more of God. You know, I, there's a desire in everybody. I've never yet met somebody who says, I know enough of the Word of God. And it's important that we recognize that desire within us is to know God more. And it's more than just studying the Bible to study the Bible. You know, if you have a look at Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said in verse 19, and if somebody asked, what is the most important statement Jesus ever made? There's a number of them. I can't th don't think you can classify one above any of the others. But this one would rank up right there out of the most important statements he's made. And that is to go, therefore, and make disciples of the, all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So in his great commission, he's saying we must reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, no one man can do that. It's going to take a team. It's going to take a whole group of people working together. And notice he didn't just say go make converts. So it's not just about having a big meeting and getting a bunch of people to confess Jesus as their Lord. That is important. We start there. But we have to be making disciples. Now, the root form, the root word, the root understanding of disciple is a learner, a pupil, someone who studies. And so Jesus is saying, make students. Why? Because there's so much to learn from the Word of God. And he uses the statement, teach them mm. to observe all that I've commanded you. So Jesus has imparted himself into his disciples. And he's saying now that he has to go back to the Father. And he's going to leave them to continue his work. Well, for them to continue, they're going to take everything he's imparted in them and transfer that into somebody else. And then through that transferring into somebody else, they don't just transfer the information or the knowledge of that word. They have to be taught to do what the disciples were taught to do by Jesus. And that is to teach the next person, because unless you have that multi-generational teaching, then whoever has the knowledge when they die, then that will be the end of it. But through the Word of God, the way God has constructed it, is that the, the church will continue to grow and expand and increase through the knowledge of His Word, being taught accurately by those who have already learned into those that are still growing up, and to continue that teaching process. And that's where studying the Word of God is really important, but it's studying with the intention of being able to teach somebody else as well. And to apply it in his own life. When you went to Matthew, my heart just leaped because we're talking about Jesus saying we must teach others yes. what he has taught them. And if you're going to have a look at the beginning of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus goes out and he shows that he has already learned the word. Yes. Because when the devil comes against him, 
What does he do? He quotes scripture. He written. doesn't just quote scripture. Yes. He knows what scripture applies in that situation. And his understanding of the heart of God in that scripture yes. brings the devil straight to a halt, conquers him. He has no answer because Jesus was a student right. of the word. And that's the power of confession, isn't it? Is right. that it's knowing what to say. Sometimes people say things over and over and over. And, and that's the difference is that when you, if you look at that, that, that scenario there, Jesus was saying, it is written. The devil tries the same thing. Mm. It is written. Now we know he's been around for thousands of years. He knows his Bible probably better than most people. Yes. But when he says it is written, Jesus immediately counteracts with it is written. He wasn't thrown by someone supposedly quoting the word. Mm. You go, oops, yeah, he's right. That is actually in the Bible. No, he knew, he understood the devil had taken that out of context. That's right. And was misusing it. Yes. And so it's not just about knowing what's in the Bible. It's knowing why it's there and how it's used. That's right. And a scripture out of context might throw somebody who doesn't know the Word of God. And that's why it is important to study the Word. Because, you know, when we first get saved, we hear that Jesus loves us and we, he, we, he died for us. He gave His life for us and rose from the dead. And today He's alive. The Bible says, by grace you're saved by faith. Well, how did that faith come? Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So I couldn't be saved unless I saw that in the Word of God. Now, the knowledge of that word came to me because someone knew to preach it to me. Now, there's so much more in here, mm. and it's the understanding of that word. And that's exactly what you're talking about there when it came to Jesus, is he understood the scriptures, not just what was in it. Yes. But he knew why it was there and how to use it. And the, because of his studying it, he could accurately position it to such power at the moment he spoke it, the devil didn't say, oh, yeah, I know it says that, but... That's right. No, he was cut off short because he realized this is somebody who knows what they're talking about. That's right. When Jesus speaks to his disciples in John 15, he says, if my word abides in you, yes. if my word abides in you, then you can ask whatever you want huh. and it will happen for you. Right. He's not just talking about having a superficial knowledge of what the Bible says. Mm. He says, if my word abides in you. Yes. Now, when he applied the word in Matthew, 14, uh, Matthew 4 against the devil, you could see from that the word of God ab was abundant in his yes. life. He didn't just know what it said. He knew the heart of God around why it was said. Right. So he spoke with the authority of the Father. You could see the word yeah. abiding in him. And so Yes, in the beginning, when we first come to know Jesus, we learn certain scriptures and we think by putting them out there that we're going to see massive change. And yes, we do see some change and we do see some growth in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then we want to know, but I'm not seeing the fullness of what God. Right. Well, I don't know enough of what God intended for me to have in the word of God. There's a context. Yes. There is a situational um, understanding of why he said something. And so some things I can't just apply to myself right now. Correct. I've got to understand the fullness of God's yes. word. I need it to abide in me, that live in process. Yes. See, that, that life is very important to understand because Jesus said his words are spirit and they lie. Yes. And there are a bunch, you know, the people that can quote scriptures. I mean, it always amazes me how even people who don't believe the Bible mm -hmm. and are trying to argue against it. And then if you somehow by speaking the word, they feel like they're in a corner or whatever, then they'll say, yeah, but the Bible does say, don't judge. Yeah. So they, they don't want the rest of the Bible, but they still haul out the scripture. You go, hang on, that you just used that out of context now. Mm -hmm. There's a context to that statement. And what is it? So the, 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 the physical word here, the actual letters printed on this page, anyone can study it. And there are, there's, there's all kinds of schools out there that you can do a, use this just as a history book and study history. Yes. But the life of the Word comes through the intimate knowledge of the Word of God and God as the Word. That's right. He is the Word. Yes. And it's coming to know Him yes. and why He breathed that Word. 
That only comes through spending time with the Word. That's right. That's where you develop a relationship with anybody. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, when John 1 tells us that in the beginning, He was the Word. Yes. So from the beginning, it's been about the Word. Yes. And so now He's given us the Word. And He doesn't just want us to flippantly use it. You know, one of the subjects we teach on Bible College in our first year is the power of words. Mm. Because there is massive power in the Word of God. Absolutely. He created everything by speaking. That's and right. He gives us His Word. We need to know the power of that Word. But it's not a, a, a gun to be used against uh, it just anything. There, yeah. it, I need to understand there's authority and I need to understand the author of those words. I, know, I need to know why He gave them to me and I need to use them for His purpose. I can't just use them for my purpose, which is separate from God's. Which is what the devil was trying to do. He was trying exactly. to use the word for his purpose. And, and, and Jesus just looked at him and said, no, hang on. It is actually written. Yes. And so he brought it back to the purpose of God and the heart of God. Right. And when he did that, nothing that Jesus ever said didn't produce. Because he was speaking from the heart of God. He was abounding in the word. He was abiding in the That's word. Right. And it's from the depth of that knowledge that he drew from. And that's why it's so important for us to know the Word and study it. Sometimes people look at my life and they say, Wow, I wish I knew the Bible like you, Pastor Alan. Well, here's the thing. I didn't wake up like this one day. I was, certainly wasn't born with it. It takes time in the Word of God. And that's what we want to encourage you with, is we've got this tremendous Bible college available where we will take you systematically through the Word the things that are important to you as a Christian, to know how to live life and what, how to study the Word in a way that it can be accurately applied in your life every single day. Have a look at this. And this, says the Lord, is my hour. This is what I destined and planned before time began. It's my hour, says God, to sweep the nations of the world with a revival and I, have positioned some of you. I have positioned some of you to be great leaders, to do mighty exploits and lead in this revival. Rise up now, lay hold of that which I have for you. In 2007, Dr. Theo Volmerans embarked on an extraordinary journey guided by 2 Timothy 2 verse 2 sowing the seeds and laying the foundation for an epic legacy that was only the beginning of CFCI Bible College. The first campus emerged as a beacon of faith and knowledge and 512 students registered for the first year. Just a year later, unwavering dedication bore fruit with three more campuses taking root. The CFCI Bible College family expanded excitingly including the addition of San Antonio, Texas. And in the heart of the Indian Ocean, Mauritius launched its Bible College, igniting a transformational journey and opening up the curriculum to other languages and cultures. Over the next five years, the CFCI Bible College family blossomed to 19 campuses worldwide, spanning continents and changing lives. Graduates birthed new campuses, making a powerful impact in South Africa. An explosion of 14 Bible colleges and the Advanced Biblical Studies program in 2015 marked a significant milestone to further equip people and have a greater understanding of the fundamentals of doctrine and theology. In 2017, an unexpected door of opportunity opened in Cuba equipping pastors to become effective crusaders for Christ. <music> 2020 brought unprecedented challenges, but we adapted swiftly, earning recognition for student support from ASIC, one of the world's largest international accreditation agencies. In 2021, two more Bible colleges broke ground. And by 2022, we stood at 111 campuses worldwide 
with over 30,000 students registered. Fast forward to 2023 and nine more campuses bring our footprint to a staggering 120 worldwide. Join us in this incredible narrative of empowerment, education and growth. CFCI Bible College, enriching minds, transforming hearts and growing leaders since 2007. The Word of God is so, so rich. And as we've been talking, we understand that the Word is not just a recording of religious ideas. It literally is God speaking. And if you think of God as infinite, beyond anything we could ever imagine, then even when it comes to His Word, even though this book may be finite cover to cover, there's infinite wisdom in that book. And so it is going to take us not even the lifetime that we live on this planet. It's the rest of eternity. We're going to be digging deeper and deeper and deeper and getting to know more and more and more of God. And that's why it's so important while we're on this earth that we take the time to spend with the Word of God. There's still so much that God wants to reveal to us. There's so much revelation that we can still enjoy and enjoy the benefits of. And you know, that's why it is so important to study, because when we save, we save by grace. We hear the word that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and we believe that, and we speak it. And then as a result, we're born again. But get a hold of that. We'd never get saved unless we'd heard that truth, which ultimately came from the word of God about what Jesus did. So my salvation hinged on the fact that it was in the word, but I didn't know it until somebody told me. So imagine what else is in there that we can still find out and still study and draw the benefits from. And that's why Bible College is really, really such a great idea. We want to dig much deeper than just every now and then. We should be studying the Word on our own. We go to church to receive insight and revelation from our pastors to set vision for the house of God. But as Paul said, we studied that, that we must study to show ourselves approved that means we're able to skillfully use the Word of God. And anything that takes skill takes time to train and study. And that's why the Bible College is really, really important. Pastor Danny, how do you see that it helped you a lot? When I have a structure, I find it much easier to study. Yes, yes I've always way. read the Bible. Yes, I, I look at words and, you, and you're sitting in your own study and you go, okay, well, I can Google this and I can yeah. <laughs> pull out a concordance and I can look at it. But what you tend to do is you're hitting individual spots. Mm -hmm. And the Bible is a complete manual. That's right. When you don't have a systematic approach, you're often only hitting the spots that seem to apply right now. You're not preparing for the future. True. You're not taking care of some of your blind spots because we all have favorites. So there are certain areas that we go into, we study. Yeah. I mean, there are characters in the Bible that we draw deep on. But what does that mean? The other characters aren't for us. Mm -hmm. So by having a systematic yes. approach, being able to go on a regular basis into an auditorium where everybody is focused at actually studying, the whole reason for getting there is the Word. Yes. You sit down, you apply it, and then you go home and you read through it again and you study it again. Well, Pastor Alan, what your whole life begins to change. Yes. You really understand the weight of the Word. You know, I, I've had students for all the years that we've been in Bible college come to me afterwards and say, when they've finished, I don't know how I'm going to actually continue now without this. <laughs> they got so used to having a, a regimen of eating uh, of the oh. Word of God that their lives could actually be measured, measurably seen to be changed. Yes. And that was so exciting for me. And then what they do discover is that through that process, like they're saying, they don't know what they're going to do now. Mm. But without realizing it, it is now a habit. Yes. And they're able to study like that, even now that they're on their own, so to speak. Yes. They've come through the process of the Bible College, got to a place where they are disciplined in studying the Word. And then that just becomes a continuous lifestyle. You know, one of the subjects we teach on is how to study the Bible. Yes. So we give them a platform for their own study going forward. Very and then good. we open up subjects around them and we show systematically yeah. how to study that particular subject. 
But, you know, there's, there's so many different ways of studying the Bible. We can study it thematically, but then we can also study it per book. Yes. And, you know, as you go further and further, your ability as a student to unlock different aspects of the Bible. Mm. You know, for instance, you, you look at the book of Philippians and you realize Paul wrote that approximately 30 years into his ministry. Right. Now, I would never have known that if, I'd been, if I hadn't been a student. You find out that's 30 years into his ministry, yes. that's after his second mission trip, and then he makes statements like, and I want to know God. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, wow, this man, he's, he's gone really through so much. He's writing so powerfully, and he's saying, yes, I want Lord. to know God. Yeah. Man, that just began to revolutionize my thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, dean of the Bible college, you've been studying the Bible, you teach the Bible, right. and suddenly you meet Paul, and he says, I don't know enough about God yet. Wow. I want to pull in. I want to draw on God yeah. even in a greater level. And I believe that's everybody's prayer and desire. I know you want to spend more time with God. We always, and I've never met somebody say, I spend enough time with God. Everybody's saying, how can I know more? How can I see more? How can I study more? And that's where this Bible college is so, so powerful. It is the creation of Dr. Theo Volmerans, who had a desire and a dream to raise up Timothy's and disciples after the Word of God. And he has taken his lifetime of experience and studying of the Word of God and put it into this form of the Bible College. And it's our privilege and our great honor to partner with him and his ministry to be able to present this Bible College here in Cape Town. We've got so many centers all around Johannesburg, different churches around South Africa, around the world, in fact, that are presenting the Bible College. And I'm sure there's one nearby you. Pastor Danny, just share with us a little bit about it. Well, the Bible College is a easy format for a student. Often when we hear the word Bible College, we go, I don't have the time. Mm. Well, first of all, it's broken up into three different years. The first, each year only requires one night a week. So you're only going to Bible College for one night a week. You sit there in, in, in an auditorium and you get taught the Word. You get pre presented different lectures, which systematically build one on top of the other yes. until you graduate. So it's one night a week. It's very attainable for everybody. When we look at the testimonies, you hear of people in almost every walk of life. From, from a just out of school matriculant, to a pensioner who thought their study years are over. They're sitting there in the Bible college and their lives are revolutionized. They go, I thought I knew the word and right. look at what I've learned. Yes. You know, so we, we see all walks of life from people who are uh, involved in um, domestic work to people that are doctors and surgeons. Right. Makes no difference who you are. The word of God revolutionizes your life. And that means it includes you. Somewhere in there, in that list, is you. And so I want to encourage you, get a hold of this. Begin to study the Word and give us a call. The details are there on the screen. You can phone the office here. We've got somebody that would love to answer all your questions. Uh, if you've got something that you're wanting to know about the Bible College, please, even if you drop it through an email, we'll answer it. We'll let you know all the details you need to know. And if it's helped, to help you find a Bible college near to you, we will do that as well. We'll find somewhere. We'll get hold of, we'll look around, and if there's not one near you, I can almost guarantee there will be one soon. But give us a call, and we'll see what we can do to find out where the nearest one is and take it from there. But other than that, I really want to encourage you. Begin. Just begin. Make the call, and let's get to studying the Word of God. Amen. Well, my friend, if you've never yet given your life to Jesus, and I want you to know that He loves you. He gave His life for you. He died for you. And everything that we study through the Word of God is because of the grace that we received as born-again children of God. We have the Holy Spirit within us. It gives us insight and understanding to know the Word. And if your desire is to know God, and maybe you've been seeking, and you just came across this program and say, you know what, this is talking to me, but I don't know Jesus. Well, he, he loves you. He died for you, paid for your sin, and rose from the dead. And today he's alive. And the Word says if you believe that, 
that you are made righteous. And he says, if you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. So I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Why don't you just pray with me right there where you are. Say this after me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you Lord. You are my Savior. From today on, I live for you, to serve you, to worship you, to know you. And I know one day when I leave this earth, I'll stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, my friend, you're born again, a child of God. And we've got something we'd like to share with you. This is a card that's going to help you know what's just happened as well as guidelines now that you are a Christian. Bible study program to help you read through your Bible in a year. And then this great CD is my Christian passport out of this world of failure into his kingdom of victory. We want to bless you with that. It's a free gift from us. If you can just write to us at that address or call us on that phone number. As soon as we've got your details, we'll send that to you. And it'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, Pastor Danny and I'll be back tomorrow to study the Word of God some more with you and look forward to being with you there. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Allen Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. Whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org, so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.